One of the things that we're taking a look at in the Center for Innovation and Learning Design is to think some of the, the big questions about what um, education might be like in the future and how uh, we can help students become innovative to be able to respond to those kinds of pressures that they're going to face. Uh, over the last 50 years, the power of computing and our ability to do work with computing has uh, increased uh, by, 50, by 100 percent every year. It's doubled every year for the last 50 years. And for the last 50 years, that hasn't made much difference because we started off with such, um, such small numbers that if you doubled them, they still didn't do much. But now we're getting to the point where if you double it, it makes a difference. Many jobs that we thought only human beings could do are going to be, are going to be done much more effectively by computers and combinations of these, different, of these uh, computing tools. Uh, take, for example, um, stock traders and bond traders. Uh, those are very well compensated people, uh, but the evidence is growing that artificial intelligence can be much more effective at trading stocks and bonds than people can. Uh, there was an article that I read recently that talked about a bank that eliminated uh, 600 of their uh, stock and bond traders, replaced it with an IT organization of five data scientists, and increased their profitability by doing that. For me, the, the thing that I, that I worry the most about is that we're, that we're going to lose these traditional jobs that used to give people fulfillment and meaning to their lives and give them um, the sense of progress, and we're going to lose those without having any replacements for it. So we're going to allow banks and insurance companies to decide, okay, well, we can replace 50% of our workforce with artificial intelligence. Uh, and we're going to get rid of all those people. There's going to be nothing else for those people to do. And I don't know that a society lasts very long if you have large numbers of people who can't find some sort of meaning in their, in, in their lives. And work has done that for most of our history. There are so many ways you could reframe work. There are all kinds of ways that you could frame the kinds of things that people do that would be meaningful to them. There are millions of people now that are studying things and participating in activities and uh, working in online communities and doing all kinds of things that they don't get paid for, but that have incredible um, value to them. Take one, Facebook. Uh, how many people are producing content for Facebook every day, uh, totally unpaid, doing it entirely as a labor of love because it connects them to other people that's important to them. It used to be you either worked or you were on the dole. There may be a middle ground where there are people who may need to have some subsistence, uh, but who are not going to be able to work in the traditional sense. I don't know what the answer to that is, but I know that it's a question that at some point, it's very likely to me that we're going to have to, to ask.